climate hero. Shia Basida is here to talk with us more about the climate emergency. She joins us live now. You're actually in Scotland coming to us live right now as world leaders are discussing the climate crisis. Shia, you actually spoke at the summit uh, yesterday, congratulations, saying that the climate crisis is, quote, an intergenerational injustice. What are you asking from these global leaders, Shia? Hello, sorry, my connection is not good, but uh, the message that we were bringing to global leaders is that the climate crisis is the biggest challenge of our lifetime. And we are not seeing the commitments go as far as we need to in terms of staying All right, so we were trying, to, we were hoping we would be able to keep uh, that connection, but as you can see, she was on a cell phone, she was in a back room. So if we can connect back up with her in the next few seconds, we'll try and continue that interview. But clearly, though you saw in the piece that Amy did, Shia Bastida is doing a great service around the country, even speaking there at the summit in Glasgow, truly a climate hero, and we thank you, Shia, uh, for all the work that you have done and your parents as well. We know that they've been a tremendous influence in your life. And I stalled just long enough. Can you hear me, Shia? Yes, sorry about oh. that. That's okay. I mean, this look, this is live television. This is uh, what happens when uh, we're using uh, cell phones and computers to try and connect. So hopefully you'll be able to keep a strong signal. But, you know, if, if I can move on, if you don't mind, you know, raising your voice for these changes has been extremely important to you. We saw that in the piece that, that Amy did when she interviewed you. You even said that the climate emergency has you reconsidering having kids one day. Um, now, I'm a mom. I kind of thought the same thing. I'm going to try and talk you out of that. But how else has this impacted your life and the decisions that you continue to make? And would you ever think about the influence that you could be on your kids if you brought them into this world? Well, um, my parents raised me with climate consciousness, which means that that's the way that I want to raise my kids. And I think all kids should be raised like that, knowing that our role in the planet is so much more about ourselves. It is about uh, taking care of, of the place that we call home. Um, so I think conferences like this, it's frustrating that it's been 26 years. For longer that I've been alive, these conferences have been going on. But at the end of the day, uh, we have never had a deadline like we have now. So we are trusting our leaders, not only on the streets, but also in government, to deliver climate justice and climate action for present and future generations. Well, like your parents were role models to you and hoping that you would work to make a difference, your children deserve the same to have a role model like you. You've already accomplished so much and you're only 19 years old. <laughs> you're on the administration committee of the People's Climate Movement, a coordinator for the Re-Earth Initiative. And in 2018, you were even invited to the ninth UN World Urban Forum to speak about indigenous cosmology and receive the spirit of the UN award. My goodness, what's next on your journey uh, to fighting climate change? Well, I'm a student right now at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm studying environmental studies. And, you know, they always tell us, go to school. You have to uh, be, um, you know, get a degree in order to be part of climate solutions. And that is what we are also doing. We're on the streets and we are in school because we need both. We need people pushing from all sectors. And we have that moral authority as youth. We can say, you are negotiating our future right now. And the numbers that you're throwing around are not just numbers for us. They are real life and they are real for, for future generations. So we are both uh, in school, on the streets, in, in government, um, in the private sector. And we just want to bring the message that this is our opportunity to build a better world, a clean world, a world free of pollution, free of pipelines running through land and contaminating water. And it is our duty as humans to be the caretakers of the future. Um, and there's a very important indigenous saying that says we have to take care of the future seven generations. And uh, thinking about the wisdom of the past seven generations. 
and we are, haven't been doing that. So I really want people to open their hearts and their minds to possibilities of imagination of a better future. Well, you have definitely opened ours. Shia Bastida, thank you so much for being a climate hero and powering through technological issues all the way from Glasgow. Appreciate you, Shia. Thank you. Sorry about that again. Thank it you so okay. much. It is okay. You are so welcome. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.